How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we have news of more people buying Bitcoin, more people getting the opportunity to buy Bitcoin and some stacking, some stacking from people just like you and me. I want to cover that along with Clean Sparks earnings that just came out. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this one, as soon as I make them. There are also gonna be links underneath the video in case you wanna try out Marjax, where you can trade cryptocurrency using leverage. You can sign up for it, there's no KYC, you don't need a VPN, and you can trade all different kinds of assets on here. If you wanna go low leverage, you can do something a little less risky, or you can go higher leverage if you wanna scalp trade. And I do have some videos on the channel talking about Marjax, how to use Marjax, if you wanna search for that, or if you wanna search for just leverage trading in general, some different strategies are on the channel. There's also a link down there to CoinW too, in case you wanna trade cryptocurrency on leverage or you just wanna buy spot. You can just go buy Bitcoin and withdraw it. Over on CoinW, there's no KYC, so if you don't want everyone to know, if you don't want every single government entity to know exactly who you are, or you know, just in case there's a hack or something, that happens all the time uh, with any website, information gets out. If you don't want people to know how much Bitcoin or crypto you bought, you can go try uh, CoinW. Now, European market regulators are considering adding Bitcoin to the list of approved assets that can be included in the $12 trillion market for UCITS. UKITS are two times bigger, uh, are, has a addressable market two times bigger than US ETFs. Bitcoin ETFs have attracted $50 billion in the U.S. so far. So honestly, I haven't talked about this before. I haven't really even heard of UCITS before. Now doing a bit of research on UTIX, it's the Undertakings for the Collective Investment in Transferable Securities. It's, uh, it's the European Commission's regulatory framework for managing and selling mutual funds. UTIX funds can be registered and sold in any country, in any country the European Union uh, using unified regulatory and investor protection requirements. So uh, UTIX is similar to a mutual fund in the US. They are registered in countries that belong to the EU and, regula and regulated by the member states where they are registered. So yeah, this just allows a lot of people to start buying these funds if they're approved. And we've talked about that even in the US where yes, they're approved. You can buy them on certain brokerages, uh, but there are a lot of a lot of compliance departments that haven't passed the ETFs yet. So they're just considering it now, but this could unlock trillions and trillions of dollars coming into Bitcoin or having access to Bitcoin. We're gonna to continue to see information like this come out where we see larger and larger markets that have access to Bitcoin or large markets just in general, right? So even if we don't get massive inflows, but we get 0.1% of all these different markets, it's gonna send up the price drastically. Now you might be saying, well, why has the price not gone up drastically recently? Well, as we know, the ETFs have sold a little bit of Bitcoin, not the last few days, but if you look over the last few weeks, last month, it's been kind of sideways action for the ETFs. And just in general, the months after the halving are usually quite boring. We had an all-time high before the halving. Uh, so now we're just kind of trending sideways. We also see that there's some money or some I should say some Bitcoin going to the OTC desks. There's no supply shortage for Bitcoin on OTC desks, about 205,000. You can see it go up from 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, uh, somewhere in there, up to about 205,000. So it was quite low. Keep in mind, 205,000 Bitcoin sounds like a lot. It is a lot, right? But we can go through that relatively quickly. Off the top of my head, I think that's about $13 billion worth of Bitcoin. So some large entity wants to come in and buy a significant amount. They can go through 205,000 Bitcoin pretty quickly. And yeah, if we can increase 100,000 Bitcoin in a month, we can definitely decrease that much in a month, especially when there is a supply shock coming. And there is a supply shock coming. There are going to be a lot of entities that want to buy. And we have news about this. $570 billion insurance giant Mass Mutual reports owning Bitcoin through the Grayscale ETF. Mass Mutual also bought $100 million worth of Bitcoin for its balance sheet in 2021. I actually pulled up that, uh, that message here from December 2020. Uh, they bought $100 million in Bitcoin for general investment uh, for their general investment account in a transaction facilitated by NYDIG. 
I didn't remember this, but this is, you know, this is a significantly large buy, $100 million for a company like this. There will be more companies as well that want to add it to their balance sheet. And there are also small holders that want to continue to buy. This I thought was just cool. You know, for everyone out there that just hears about people having millions of dollars of Bitcoin, it's important to celebrate getting to 0.1 Bitcoin, 0.25 Bitcoin, 0.51 Bitcoin. This person says on Reddit, nobody in my life knows I'm investing in BTC, so I kind of want to share it at least here because I'm happy. I know it's much less than most people have here, but I live in a crap country where average salary is $800, so it's not easy for the last four years to DCA every month. Took a lot of sacrifice and working overtimes and weekends. I DCA'd all the way from 69 all the way down to 15. In 2021 and 2022, I lost some money just trying to buy and trade alts. And luckily for me, bear market was just uh, just started, so I had some time to recover. But I learned my lesson. This 20% dip made me go with final DCA, and I'm happy to achieve this personal milestone of having one-fourth of a Bitcoin in my hardware wallet. This is really cool. I'm going to make a video this weekend talking about, you know, if you're looking maybe 10, 20 years out, what does that take to retire? Because we always look end of decade, we look maybe 10 years out, but looking 20 years out, how much Bitcoin would it actually take to retire? So be on the lookout for that video, but I just wanted to shed some light on this because this is really cool. And moving on, CleanSpark announced their earnings. Blowout quarter. To be clear, the stock's up a couple percent. Part of that is, you know, there are there are high expectations for CleanSpark because they have been crushing it. We know that they've been crushing it stock price has also been moving up, right? It's up 55% year to date, but over the last year, it's up 300%. So they do have some high expectations. They did hit some great milestones though. They recognized about 112 million in revenue and they had about 127 million in net income, adjusted EBITDA of 182 million. So yeah, they've just been growing like mad. Their current hash rate surpasses 17 exahash per second. So yeah, they had a banner quarter. And to be clear, I need to do some more research on this or I need to dig into it even deeper. But just on the surface level, it looks quite good. Cash of $323 million, Bitcoin of $358 million. Current assets, about $700 million. They barely have any debt, $12.8 million worth of debt. Now to be clear, they have been growing and it's not all from cash flow. The one thing about these Bitcoin miners, especially CleanSpark, I'm sure the other Bitcoin miners too, but I haven't looked into them as much recently. They do dilute shareholders a lot. So if you look a year ago, Q1 of 2023, they had 80 million shares outstanding. Now, from what I can see here, they have about 225 million. So they have increased their shares by 150%. So yes, they don't have much debt, but that's because they've been able to pay it down a lot. Uh, They are not taking loans out. They're just issuing more shares. So it's great. They had a great quarter, but keep that in mind. You want to pay attention to that because they are diluting shareholder equity a lot. So yeah, they might be earning $112 million, let's say, this quarter, or let's say they uh, earned $127 million in net income this quarter. Next quarter, if they keep on diluting, you're going to earn less per share. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but they still have to grow and they still are trying to make this accretive. I think they've done a good job of making sure that it's actually worth what they're doing. Like if they grow to certain scales, they can buy rigs for cheaper, right? They can buy a bunch of rigs, maybe at better discount, or they can get power for cheaper. So I'm not saying that they're misusing the shares that they're issuing. But I'm just saying we have to pay attention to that because you can't just look at the top line or you can't just look at the net income from quarter to quarter and think that's all on an even playing field here, for example. Like if they get 100 million this quarter in revenue, it's not necessarily the same as 100 million next quarter. So we'll have to continue to watch that. But they have mined a lot of Bitcoin. Actually, they just gave this uh, a couple days ago, May 2. And they had a banner month. They had 721 Bitcoin mined in uh, in April. And actually, they got up to 48 Bitcoin in a day. I'm guessing this is like they just got a bunch of machines. And they just, uh, where is that? They mined an average of 24. So I'm guessing they got 48 
like a day or two before the Bitcoin halving and then the Bitcoin halving took place and then they went down to 24 basically after that or maybe a little bit less even but they had a high of 48 in one day so yeah pretty impressive overall 721 bitcoin that's a lot of money let's just run those numbers real quick so they're at a run rate of 61,300 per bitcoin they're at a run rate of about 44 million a month 44 million a month in revenue which is pretty impressive they only sold 2.8 bitcoin though they are in stacking mode they've really done a good job of keeping their balance sheet clean which means they can stack more bitcoin not be worried about debts so yeah Quite impressive, quite impressive. Uh, we'll have to continue to watch, but overall, I think it was a good quarter for them. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you are trading cryptocurrency. Let me know if you're uh, in any long trades or short trades on crypto. I appreciate it. Check out the links underneath if you want to try out Marjax or CoinW, maybe even Blowfin as well. All are great. So definitely check those out. I'll see you in the next video.